exam. This exam problem falls under the topic of protection, which accounts for 6 of 80 problems on the PE exam. The question reads, Two generators are connected in parallel, and each serves their own transformer. The outputs of these transformers are connected to a common bus and then a common transmission line. If a three-phase fault occurs on the transmission line, then what will be the fault current? The ratings of the equipment are shown on the next slide, and you can assume the circuit is three-phase and the neutrals are solidly grounded. The properties of the generators and transformers are shown on this slide. The voltages, MVAs, and subtransient reactances are provided for the generator. The voltages, MVAs, and percent impedances are provided for the transformers. Finally, the rated voltage and impedance per phase of the transmission line is provided. This problem only provides the necessary information to complete the problem, but the PE exam may also include extra information, like transformer configurations, or transient reactances as opposed to subtransient reactances, and negative or zero components, whereas in this problem only positive components are shown. On the exam, you should be able to construct a simple one-line diagram to show which components are in parallel and which components are in series, if the PE exam does not provide a diagram for you. There are multiple methods to complete this problem, like the MVA method and the per unit method. However, this video focuses on the MVA method, and if you would like more information on the per unit method, please see the website in the description link. The first step in the MVA method is to convert all components properties to equivalent short circuit MVA. This is the maximum amount of power that can flow through the component during a short circuit. Each component has its own way of finding its equivalent short circuit MVA, which will be covered in the next slide. For the generator, the short circuit MVA value is found by dividing the full load MVA of the generator by the generator's subtransient reactants. Do not use the transient reactants or steady state reactants, since the transient and steady state reactants values do not give you the instantaneous short circuit current. Next, the transformer short circuit MVA value describes the total amount of apparent power through a transformer during a three-phase fault. This value is found by dividing the full load MVA of the transformer by the percent impedance of the transformer. The short circuit current in a transmission line is simply a function of the voltage in the line and the impedance in the line. The short circuit MVA value is found by taking the rated voltage in kilovolts squared and dividing that value by the per phase impedance. The units will result in MVA for the short circuit MVA of the transmission line. If you would like more information on how the unit conversions work, please see the website in the description. The previous calculations will result in the following short circuit MVA values as shown in this figure. So the next step is to combine each of these MVA values with the equations for combining components in parallel and series on the next slide. The following equations can be used to combine each component. You can notice from these equations that when parallel components are used, then the MVA value is increased. And when series components are used, the resulting total MVA is reduced. First, you want to work from left to right to simplify the circuit. First, combine the generator and transformer in series for both sets. Notice that the series components will increase impedance to short circuit current, which in turn decreases the MVA short circuit value. Then combine these two circuits in parallel. Notice that parallel lines provide additional paths for short circuit current to flow, which will increase the MVA short circuit value. Finally, combine the previous values in series with the transmission line. This will result in the value as shown. The last step on the MVA method is to use the resulting 
combined MDA value for the entire circuit from the power source to the fault location and the apparent power equation to find the short circuit current or fault current for a three phase fault. The equation is simply apparent power is equal to the short circuit current times the voltage 